Hi everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. I apologize for the sun setting in the background. It's going to make my uh, face look a bit whiter than it usually does, which is actually a pretty impressive feat since I'm already pretty much base coat as far as my skin tone is. Uh, but for today, I had a lot of weightlifting work, just a lot of work in general. I started out with some, they were no feet snatches, and I did some muscle snatches, so some snatch work, and I moved on to some cleans. Then some clean pulls, which you'll see if you don't know what those are, they're just... I don't know. I mean, you'll see. They're hard to explain because I'm not very good at them. <laughs> it's basically a clean without the flipping your elbows part, everything before that. Um, and then after that, I had some block pulls and front squats. I'm trying to remember all the different things that I did. Front squats that were pretty light and then some overhead press, which was um, relatively high intensity for those since you can work pretty heavy with those pretty frequently. Uh, what I think went well today was a lot of the weightlifting stuff. I mean, obviously my form um, is continually going to need to be improved, but I'm very happy with how all of that went as far as me handling the volume. Front squats felt good on my leg. Form for everything you know, felt as good as it did. What I would do differently, I was in the gym, I think, for a bit too long. I got here about five. I worked out slow, but I was here about three and a half hours. But I did work out really slow. So, I mean, if I was quick, three hours, two hours, and... 45 minutes it would still be way too long what I would do differently is take the block pulls that I did today and move those to a separate day when I have clean pulls clean pulls actually took a lot out of me because I had lots of lots of work with those and despite them being lighter weights you're trying to move them quickly and just just the sheer number um, sheer amount of volume with those definitely wore me down a little bit with that so um, I'd move those to, di to a different day to help me get through my workout a bit quicker and um, just try to generally work a little bit faster but um, it, when I have deadlift stuff in it's just gonna take a while with all of that and um, I had just about all my friends in today lifting so I had a lot of um, different things to uh, talk about with different people and a lot of uh, critiques and all of that fun uh, shenanigans and all of that so a lot of that stuff made me work out slower but I'm just generally work out slow when I have all this time in the summer and uh, I just kind of have to keep in the back of my mind that I eventually will have to go to work again <laughs> and um, I won't have hours upon hours to work out endlessly and uh, as much as fun as that is it won't be a feasible thing to do um, but uh, other than that, workout went really well. It was almost kind of like cardio with this amount of stuff that I did. Uh, and I try with the uh, weightlifting stuff that I do to work with shorter rest in between sets, which is much easier to do because the weights I'm doing are light compared to what I'm doing. It's not like I'm trying to do you know short rest on uh, deadlifts or anything like that because that would just be death. But when you're doing clean pulls, the heaviest I went was 225. You know, as far as pulling, that isn't that strenuous on my CNS or just as far as strength wise. It's just doing it correctly and trying to get it to move correctly and move quickly. And um, doing that, you can move quicker with that. So it's not quite as difficult. But um, outside of all that, did a little of ab work, did a couple push ups, and um, decided to, you know, I just kind of just hung out a little bit extra <laughs> with everything. Um, but outside of lifting, uh, hopefully. Pretty soon I'll be a homeowner of some sort. You know, everything works out well. Knock on, there's no wood in this car to knock on, nor am I very superstitious at all. But hopefully the house works out because then I'll be able to move out of my apartment and use the money that I'm paying for rent towards a mortgage. And I'll be staying with a friend, whether it's this house or a different house, whatever house I end up buying. Um, I'll be able to have a roommate and then he'll be able to pay some rent so it'll help me pay off the mortgage a lot quicker and help with um, various expenses that houses tend to have so it's a very nice thing um, and once I figure out you know if this one works out or a different house works out whatever works out um, you'll notice a different background but I may do a little tour of that if any of you would be interested in seeing the place but um, I won't go into too much detail about you know the the house and whatnot now because it's I've only submitted the earnest money and I have to wait to see if they accept my offer and get it inspected and do all that fun shenanigans so there's uh, several steps and uh, the last place I looked at it got messed up with the inspection because it was kind of janky so it could always could always go away but hopefully hopefully not and I have a feeling that it won't be but uh, just just depends you know, all the processes have to work but uh, yeah that's about it that I have for this video. Um, 
look forward to the second part of this video, which will be a uh, political talk. I can't really think right now. I need to go take a shower and eat some food and gather myself before I talk about that. But if you want to hear that, stay tuned for the second part. If not, then I will see you all in the next video. Peace. Hey everyone, hope everyone is doing well. This is going to be the second part of my video. I apologize for the noise in the background. I have to monitor. Some chicken and some rice that I'm making. I will, I will be making some other food with that, probably some vegetables. I'm actually eating relatively healthy today. Um, I actually usually do. <laughs> I eat pretty clean most of the time. But in this video, I want to talk about something that was uh, brought upon by Sergeant Fit in his recent parody video of Ty, Ty Lopez, or however you say his name. And I apologize, I'll be walking around my uh, apartment a little bit. You know, someone like Ty Lopez is just he's a scammer I mean he's trying to get you to buy something and I actually I went not fully into the rabbit hole but I went and read some like a reddit post about someone that actually bought some of his stuff and they, essentially you buy this stuff you don't get much of anything with it which is what I would expect but then they try to get you to upgrade and get the bigger packages and to get different things once you're already into there once you're already but a little bit they want a little bit more which to me seems very scam like which I'm sure it pretty much is with that uh, as far as I know, Ty Lopez doesn't have actual stuff. A lot of his stuff he rents and you know all that stuff to appear a lot richer than he does. And a lot of his commercials, he's like, "Oh, you know, look at the stuff behind me." You know, I have a beautiful closet, a Walmart light back there. But he'll rent some expensive car or an expensive house and show that in the background. And that's not very difficult to do. Obviously, you need a lot of money to do that. So he's not completely poor, but he's not raking in billions of dollars or whatever he wants to seem like he's doing. And people like that are very dangerous, not for any fact that he's trying to sell some self-help program or anything like that, because I don't find anything inherently wrong with trying to do that sort of thing and trying to make a product and sell it, which is essentially what he's trying to do. But what I find a bigger issue with is that he always clarifies, this is not a get-rich scheme, but look at this case study of this person getting rich quickly. It's essentially a get-rich-quick scheme with enough legal jargon in it to not get sued directly with it which is going to create more people that are going to just get caught in the mess of thinking that they can do things quickly and dumbly and just like how he has proposed um i think the one is you know manage the social media accounts of businesses and make them pay you to do it and that's real easy you get thousands of dollars a month all this magical stuff um i actually listened to one it's quite long. It was, I think it was originally a live stream of him talking about real estate with some guy. And um, essentially, he's like, you don't need any money to start because you're not going to actually use the earnest money. And the earnest money, if you don't know what that is, I actually didn't know what it is until I started looking at houses. Um, it's usually, at least in my case, it's been $500 you put down and you give to the people who own the realtor, whoever, who's running the house, the sell, the sale of the property that solidifies the offer that you have for them so it allows you to say like I'm serious about buying this house there's five hundred dollars now if the deal doesn't work out there's ways to get the money back if you don't there's all kinds of jargon that go with that but essentially you need that five hundred dollars you can't just you know put it on a credit card and do stupid things like that which is <laughs> like you don't need any money to start like yeah you do need a little bit of money to start to buy a house and you can't be trying to flip these expensive houses and do all these things that they talk about doing it, it's it's very dangerous to do and someone that just believes what someone like him says whether it's with real estate or something else can get into a lot of financial trouble uh, doing these sort of things because they're not intelligent about doing it they don't they make a risky transition because they think well this person's made thousands of dollars what's the worst I only make a hundred hundred dollars I make a thousand dollars they they think that it's a get-rich-quick scheme and that they can um Apologies, I'm sweating a lot. I don't know why. I guess because it's like 90 degrees out still. But um, they think it's a, a get rich quick scheme and they don't want to put in all the hard work of figuring out how to do things themselves. And um, that's not to say that there aren't ways to make money in an intelligent way. The way I'm trying to do it was buying a house I can actually afford with a mortgage that I know I can pay for. I'm not looking to flip it and sell it really quick because that's stupid and that's a very risky way to try to make any money unless you are uh, a professional flipper of something of that sort of which I am not nor do I have the finances to even approach doing something like that but what I'm doing is I picked a house that I can afford by myself no issue 
I can afford the mortgage every single month on a 15 year conventional mortgage. The bank is going to give me that mortgage, I can qualify for it, I can afford it, I don't need anything else besides my teaching job, which I thankfully still have. Uh, <laughs> what is a bonus is that I have a roommate that's willing to move in whenever I buy this house, willing to pay rent at this house. So all that money goes into the house so then I'm able to not make a profit because I'm going to owe money towards the house, but I'm able to put money towards the house more quickly than if I were just doing it myself. Now if he just says, you know what, never mind, I can't do it, financial situations change, no big deal. We're still friends, nothing has changed, the only difference is I just can't pay it off as quickly. Now that sort of foresight is something that thankfully has been enabled by my upbringing and this just general intelligence by my parents and the bank not giving me too big of a mortgage and saying I can afford this when I can't. Doing trying to think things out so even in the worst case scenario I'm not gonna be broke because I ain't gonna be broke I, I'm not about that life <laughs> so I think I'm a bit off topic but someone like Ty Lopez and the people like him want to perpetrate that there are these simple and quick ways to make a lot of money when even the most seemingly simple ways are very complex and very difficult and if you're successful at them, then that's good. But chances are you either were lucky or you put in a lot of hard work for them. Now, real estate is something you gotta be super smart for. You gotta have money to fall back on. You gotta have all these different things. You gotta, I would work with a realtor because that's gonna help out tremendously. You have to do a lot of different things in order to minimize the risk that you're taking, whether it's with that or anything else. And, the managing the social media things I heard him say a thousand different times I think that's just hooey I don't think a bunch of businesses are going to do that and they're going to go to towards professional companies that are going to do that not just random individuals and just pay them thousands of dollars to do this um, magical work with that and even if they did you have to do all the social media stuff for one company that's quite a bit of work depending on how many social media pages they want they have the amount of posts that they have the frequency, the interactions, the whatever else they have to do with that, it's a lot of work to go into. It's not like you're going to do 10 different companies unless that's going to be your, a full-time job and you're not going to get thousands and thousands of dollars to do that. company's not going to put that much money into social media stuff. I don't know where he's getting all these magical numbers from unless it's like some giant company, but chances are if it's a giant company with thousands of dollars to put into one thing, they're just going to pay a company to do that. They're not going to pay a random 20 year old to do that and unfortunately that's where you see and on that uh, realtor video and the comments it was unlisted video so you only have the comments of people that went through Ty Lopez's website to click the video to get back to YouTube if that makes sense so all the comments are like I'm gonna try this so I'm gonna be make a million dollars watch me and it's just like no you're not you have to have realistic goals my realistic goal with this house is that I am able to afford it. <laughs> That's it. Anything that I get above that, say I pay it off in 10 years instead of 15, that's great. Let's say I get it, I upgrade it, and then I resell it for a little bit more, make a couple thousand dollars, I'm able to take that money and put it into another house. Wonderful, I'm able to do those things. You know, some magical thing happens and the housing market just soars off and I am able to make more money, then great for me. But you can't assume those kind of things are going to happen. The housing market could crash tomorrow and my house could be worth five nickels and a, a, a used, I don't know, napkin. Uh, but you have to be smart about what you're doing. And you can't listen to people like Ty Lopez and get caught into those things. The only reason I listen to his real or thing is like maybe there's something interesting here, but it's just a lot of just random jargon that doesn't mean anything. And it's just enough to get you interested in buying the product and it's a dangerous thing. And it's something that is really annoying to see on YouTube and it's something that I think is particularly dangerous to have on a platform like YouTube because of all the young people that are on there. Most people that watch my stuff are young people, you know, 18 to 40 I would say or like 90, I don't know if it's 90 but it's the vast majority of my audience is in that age bracket. And I'm pretty sure that's a pretty consistent thing across YouTube. So the people that are going to be impressionable that those kind of things are young people coming up. And it's, it's something that is not smart to do. What you should be doing is getting education or figuring out a trade that you can do, something that you can make money in a stable fashion 
and then you can go and try to do these different ventures and see if some of those work see if they you know if they don't work then no harm no foul but if they do work then you get a little bit of extra money if they work really well then you're one of the lucky people that get to be rich but it's not something that everyone can do or it's going to happen well for everyone and I think that's something that's important to impart is that no matter what you do whether it's real estate whether it's Ty Lopez's secret ways to make millions of dollars you have to work hard at what you're doing so say you want to try those tricks say you want to do all these different things you gotta work hard at whatever you're doing and if you don't know what you want to do or how to make money or all these different things just find something find a stupid job find something and just work hard at it you don't know what you want to do in college pick one and just work hard at it working hard will allow you to take that skill of work ethic to apply it to different things and I think that will lead you to more success than any sort of get rich quick scheme and I need to check in my chicken because I'm gonna burn that son of a gun and I will wrap up this video here but hopefully uh, this made a little bit of sense for you and I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day peace